Naples, mid-August 2025. Heat shimmered over the Bay of Naples as beachgoers crowded Bagnoli's shoreline when a familiar but striking sight rippled across social feeds. Seawater in the shallows appeared to boil, strings of bubbles rising from the sandy bottom and clustering on the surface. The footage, amplified by neighbourhood pages and citywide influencers, quickly reignited a perennial question in a region defined by restless geology. Was Campi Flegre stirring beneath Bagnoli, or was something more ordinary at work? Local officials, scientists and long-time residents moved quickly to clarify. The bubbling is real, geological and familiar. It reflects the interaction between the sea and the vast hydrothermal system beneath the Flegrean fields, where gases percolate through fractures and seep into the water column. Italy's National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, INGV, described the phenomenon as routine submarine venting, long observed along the Bagnoli and Pozzuoli coasts, driven mainly by carbon dioxide escaping through thermalized sediments. Volcanologist Lucia Papalado, newly appointed director of the Vesuvius Observatory, echoed that assessment. The bubbles, she explained, are a visible signature of the local hydrothermal system, their appearance modulated by tides and currents. The water is not truly boiling. The effect is created by continuous gas streams breaking the surface. These events, spectacular on video, are not dangerous in themselves and must be understood alongside continuous monitoring of the caldera. The clarification mattered because the bubbling coincided with a swarm of small earthquakes that rattled parts of Campi Flegre between August 16th and 18. According to INGV, the swarm included several dozen micro-events, the largest about magnitude 2.2 at roughly 3 kilometers depth. Residents reported a low boom accompanying the strongest shock a familiar sound in the caldera's shallow seismicity, more felt as a dull thud than a sharp shake. These events highlight a pattern of recurring micro activity that has been observed over recent days, almost resembling the gradual build-up toward a stronger seismic episode. A recent study from the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, published at the end of March, sheds new light on this phenomenon. According to the research, Rises in ground surface temperature detected by satellite monitoring appear to precede significant earthquakes. Data from 2024 revealed that when ground temperatures increased by about 7 degrees Celsius, strong seismic events followed two to three days later in the Solfatara crater. In the most recent INGV bulletin, an even more concerning figure emerged. An increase of more than 10 degrees Celsius within the crater far higher than those previously associated with major earthquakes. The implication is troubling. If past events linked a 7 degrees Celsius rise to powerful quakes, then a temperature surge exceeding 10 degrees Celsius may signal even greater underground unrest. This raises the pressing question of why such data is not being openly communicated to the local population. While it is true that predicting earthquakes with certainty is impossible, the strong correlations highlighted in the Institute's own research suggest that precautionary information should be shared before seismic swarms escalate. The argument is simple, just as weather forecasts are issued daily despite frequent inaccuracies. Communities should at least be made aware of conditions that historically preceded major events. Failing to provide this information, even with the risk of being wrong, may ultimately prove more dangerous than issuing a cautious warning. Current observations confirm intensifying volcanic and geothermal activity. Drone footage has captured striking fumarolic emissions at Pisciarelli and within the Solfatara crater. Dense plumes of steam continue to rise from the high vents, visible even under the heat of the summer sun. For those monitoring the region closely, these developments point to increased underground movement that cannot be ignored. So, was there a link between the quakes and the bubbling? Seismologists advised caution. Small swarms usually reflect pressure adjustments in the shallow crust, as hydrothermal fluids migrate, and gas venting at Bagnoli fits that picture. While earthquakes can open or close pathways that modulate gas escape, Bubbling alone is not evidence of magmatic movement at depth. 
Rather, it's the surface face of a faulted hydrothermal system that has been venting for centuries. Monitoring provides the key context. ENGV's Medusa system, a network of seabed and buoy instruments in the Gulf of Pozzuoli, now tracks seafloor motion, pressure, gas flux and offshore quakes, extending observation into the half of the caldera that lies underwater. This means the very stretch of coast where bubbles appear is part of an instrumented system designed to detect abnormal changes. No such changes were flagged during the mid-August swarm. The swarm also followed a stronger jolt in July a magnitude 4.0 event centred near Bagnoli that briefly sent people into Naples's streets. Though minor in damage, it reinforced how hydrothermal pressure can produce disruptive shakes without magmatic escalation. Mid-August's smaller swarm fit that stop-and-start pattern. Pressure builds and is released episodically, stress radiating through shallow fractures. For residents, the questions were practical. Is it safe to swim? Does bubbling mean danger? Authorities stressed that volcanic advisories remain tied to civil protection protocols, not single bubbling events. Environmental concerns, legacy sediment contamination from the former steelworks, shape beach use more than volcanic risk. On the volcanic side, Campi Flegre remains at yellow alert, with guidance to stay informed, no evacuation routes and follow official updates. Much of the unease stems from language. To the eye, the surface looks like a pot on a stove. But seawater here remains far below boiling temperature. The boil is an optical effect from rising carbon dioxide streams. In some spots, groundwater seepage warms the upper centimetres modestly. But surveys confirm no magmatic heating at the shoreline. The hydrothermal system acts like a patchwork of pipes and valves. Some conduits channel gas to the seabed. Others relieve pressure through fault slips that register as small quakes. What matters for hazard is whether these processes deviate from their long-observed patterns. For instance, sustained rises in gas flux, changes in gas chemistry, persistent seismic energy at depth, or accelerated ground uplift. According to INGV's bulletins, none of those red flags accompanied the August bubbling. Still, public anxiety is understandable. Campi Flegre looms large in memory. Monte Nuovo's birth in the 16th century, centuries of Bradiciism lifting and dropping Pozzuoli's Roman market, and modern jolts that stir unease. Ingui has tried to meet this unease with rapid plain language notes and deeper explainers, emphasizing its expanded offshore monitoring. Viral clips of bubbles are thus not mysterious omens, but measured signals within a larger data set. Residents with longer memory recall that Bagnoli's coast has produced bubbles for generations, sometimes linked to historic thermal springs later capped by industry, sometimes from natural vents on the seafloor. Local groups point to that heritage in urging caution against sensationalism, while stressing the need for vigilance anywhere the sea exhales geologic gases. As videos circulated, a local lawmaker requested clarification from scientists who reiterated that this was a known phenomenon. Within 48 hours, news coverage had shifted from is this a new danger to how does this fit the broader picture, aided by INGV's routine updates on the concurrent swarm. Even so, authorities note minor non-eruptive risks. In calm, confined spots, high CO2 concentrations just above the seabed can momentarily displace oxygen, though wave mixing usually disperses gases quickly. In practice, ordinary surf hazards and legacy pollution remain the greater risks at Bagnoli. The real value of such bubbling is as calibration. Each visible episode is a chance to compare public observation with instrument readings. If bubbling coincides with spikes in seabed pressure or CO2 flux, that's one story. If it rides atop ordinary background, that's another. In mid-August, instruments confirmed the latter. Naples, however, lives geology daily. In Bagnoli, where the sea represents both renewal and reminder, boiling water lands like a postcard from the underworld. The challenge for scientists is to validate vigilance without stoking alarmism, to say that the sea can fizz without the sky falling, and so the answer to the opening question is both simple and layered. Campi Flegre is indeed the engine behind the bubbles, but they are not evidence of magmatic advance. They mark the steady breathing of a hydrothermal system long woven into Naples's landscape. 
From August 16th to 18, the caldera exhaled bubbles and a handful of quakes, and then life resumed. Scientists kept listening, instruments kept watching, and the sea returned to looking like any other sea, a skin of light over a complicated world. The context that frames this episode is broader than a weekend of bubbling water. Campi Flegre is not a single volcano, but a vast depression about 13 kilometers across. The scar of two colossal eruptions roughly 39,000 and 15,000 years ago. Those blasts reshaped southern Italy and scattered ash across Europe, leaving behind a caldera that still breathes today. Half of it lies on land, etched into the suburbs of Naples and Pozzuoli, the other half sinks beneath the Tyrrhenian Sea. Bagnoli, where the bubbling drew headlines this August, sits at the seam of that story. Once dominated by a sprawling steelworks, the district has long straddled industry, sea and geology. Even after the plant closed in the 1990s, its footprint left behind sediment contamination and a coastline that is only slowly reopening to swimmers. Against that backdrop, bubbles rising from the seabed take on layered meaning. They are at once a reminder of buried industry, of natural volatility, and of the city's unbroken link to its geologic foundation. The hydrothermal system beneath Campi Flegre is complex. Beneath the surface, groundwater mixes with volcanic heat, creating steam-rich reservoirs that push and pull against the fractured crust. When pressures shift, earthquakes ripple. When pathways open, gases stream upward, finding outlets in fumaroles on land or vents beneath the sea. Scientists liken it to a breathing body, one whose size and hiccups are natural but must always be measured for changes in rhythm. That measurement is now more sophisticated than at any point in history. Alongside Medusa's seabed instruments, satellites track uplift across the caldera with millimetre precision. GPS stations capture ground motion in real time, and spectrometers sample gases for shifts in chemistry. A sustained rise in sulphur dioxide, for example, could hint at fresh magma intruding upward. So far, data shows stability. CO2 dominates emissions. Uplift continues at a slow rate, about 10 millimetres per month, and seismicity remains shallow. None of that cancels the underlying hazard. Civil protection authorities maintain yellow alert status for a reason. Campi Flegre is one of the most studied but least predictable volcanoes in Europe. Its eruptions are rare, but its non-eruptive unrest, the so-called Bradyseism, can still disrupt daily life. For many Neapolitans, the August footage revived a familiar cycle. First alarm, then explanation, then a collective shrug as life pressed on. In cafes along via Napoli, conversations turned quickly from Did you see the sea boiling? to football fixtures and traffic. Yet beneath that shrug lies a culture attuned to risk. Evacuation drills are embedded in schools, civil protection maps line municipal offices, and most residents know that their city sits between two restless giants, Vesuvius to the east, Campi Flegre to the west. What makes Bagnoli's bubbling different is its visibility in the social media age. A century ago, such events might have been noted by fishermen and forgotten. Today they are live-streamed, hashtagged and analysed within minutes, amplifying both curiosity and anxiety. For scientists, this is both a challenge and an opportunity. Each viral video becomes a teachable moment, a chance to explain the caldera's behaviour and reinforce what constitutes a real warning. In that sense, the August bubbling was less a geological turning point than a communications test. NGV responded within hours, issuing statements that balanced technical detail with accessible language. Local media carried those quotes prominently, helping to dampen speculation. The pattern reflected lessons learned from past crises. When information lags, rumour fills the gap. When scientists speak quickly and clearly, public trust grows. At the shoreline itself, the scene soon normalised. Swimmers returned, children splashed near the bubbles, and fishermen shrugged at what they called the sea's breath. For them, it was no anomaly, but a reminder that Naples rests on shifting ground. They live with it daily, in the steaming vents of Solfatara, the uplift of Pozzuoli, and the shadow of Vesuvius. The bubbles joined that chorus, another verse in a long song of geology, unsettling but ordinary. By the week's end, the story had faded from national headlines, replaced by other crises and diversions.
But in Naples, where the ground has a memory, and the sea sometimes tells secrets, the image lingered, water fizzing like champagne in the August sun, a reminder that below every ordinary day lies extraordinary restlessness. If you found this deep dive into Naples' living geology informative, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Your support helps bring more stories about Earth's mysteries, natural wonders and scientific discoveries to light. Stay curious, stay prepared and stay tuned.